So today we're here with our pop-up camper. We just moved it to storage so that we can get it ready to sell, have some people come look at it. It's much easier to set it up here um, because we, oh, we live in an HOA and uh, we have to back it out of our slope driveway, set it up in the cul-de-sac every time we wanna get inside. So I'd say that that's probably the one primary downside of having a pop-up camper for our family was just that we didn't have a place where we could easily pop it up and down. We occasionally would pop it about halfway in our garage, so I was able to do the flooring and some minor, um, you know, packing, some minor adjustments to the trailer from the garage, but it's just much easier here at a storage facility or if you have a um, a place at your house that's flat that you can leave it out at all times that is you know so much easier so we're gonna set it up first thing you make sure it's level front to back side to side I did that we have a ball leveler we love this thing because we are able to put it around a parked camper you don't have to level prior to parking so when we were using the block levelers uh, you would figure out where you wanted to park uh, figure out how far off it was, whether it's like one inch or two inches off from being level. And then you would put your little blocks down, pull forward, and then back up on those blocks. This way we can kind of get it parked, put the ball leveler in, and then jack it to the level that it needs to be. Um, with a car full of kids, this is, you know, definitely the simpler method. So we've got it level front to back, side to side. You don't want to pop up a pop-up camper if it's not level because there's just it, these things are really fragile and there's just a lot more that can go wrong with the slides things can bend the door will not set up properly if it's not pretty much perfectly level so that can be really frustrating if you're trying to you know get the door into place for 30 minutes and you know it would have been just way simpler if you had made sure it was level perfectly level first so we've got We've got it level here, front to back, side to side. I'd say that these, these peel and stick on levels are amazing because otherwise you've got to open the door, put a level down on the floor. And uh, we did that for a little while. These I think were about $10 for a set. We actually bought a second set and put them on our full size camper. So we, we really like these. I'd say this is like the first thing that we bought for the camper. We put down the stabilizers. You do not level with these. They cannot take a ton of pressure. So uh, you don't want to snap them. They're just to keep the camper from rocking. So don't make that mistake. Don't try and level your camper with these. They're not intended to lift your camper up. So level it front to back, side to side then put your stabilizers down. Then we're gonna unlock it. You don't want to forget to unlock these babies before you try to set it up. So this is kind of like a checklist item. And typically my husband and I uh, swap up tasks you know he's responsible for certain things I'm responsible for certain things and that way we don't uh, you know nobody forgets anything and let me see he's not here to help me so <laughs> let's just make sure I don't forget anything you don't want to rush setting these things up and today we actually have somebody coming to view this camper and um, potentially purchase it within the hour so I am kind of rushing but I'm trying to not rush too much where I make a mistake um, last week my husband um, actually kind of forced one of the beds in and it snagged the canvas. So don't do that. Don't rush, take your time, think through all the steps and just do it right the first time. and It'll save you drama in the end. So here we go. I'm going to next get our, our crank. Don't do what I did. Don't leave it on the ground. You don't want to drive off without it. 
I think they're kind of a pain to replace. You have to order them from a specialty parts store. It's not something you can get at Lowe's. So definitely don't want to misplace them. And so it slides into the back just like that. So this is a Jayco J Flight. I think it's a Baja series, 1207, and it sleeps eight ish. That sounds normal. That scared me the first, I don't know, four or five times that it did that, but it'll make a popping sound about halfway through the cycle. Apparently that's the gears catching back up from everything that I've read. It's totally normal. It'll make a kind of pop sound about midway through. So our second big tip is, sorry, I'm out of breath. I need to get in shape. Um, this thing just don't put too much tension on the camper. You don't need it to be super tight. This can kind of guide you, tell you when to stop. You don't want to snap this guide though, so just be careful. And um, don't over, over pop it up. So here's what it looks like without the bed out. So I'm gonna pull the bed out and put the supports on. Your next tip, don't ever sit on your bed pulled out without supports. You can bend or break the rail. We did not do this. We learned from somebody else's mistakes. Another YouTuber taught, taught us that. So we've been really careful. And I'm gonna set this bed up. This is the rear, I believe it's a queen. Double check, make sure nothing is snagged. That's as far as it goes. Comes down here. I'm gonna use my body to push it up. Curved end here. Don't drive off with this thing down. Put that on your checklist. Always put it back in its home before you drive off. We didn't make that mistake. Just to be clear, because we learn from other people's mistakes. One thing we learned the hard way is if you have a sink that flips over, make sure that it is lined up here or the sink won't quite match up and you'll have water leaking all over the floor, which my husband did when he was winterizing the camper. He forgot that this has to be lined up because this is part of the inside setup, which is my husband did a lot of the outside stuff. I did a lot of the inside stuff and uh, it just made things go a lot quicker, but unfortunately we didn't spend as much time learning each other's jobs as we probably should have. So he made that mistake and forgot that this has to be lined up perfectly. And you can actually see in the back here, hopefully that there's a piece of wood. You don't want this to not line up properly. 
so that should it should be even and the sink should drain in this camper we put contact paper down um on the countertops they were just like an off-white color and uh, uh this is seems easier to clean there were some flaws in the original there's some flaws in the contact paper it's really for aesthetics i wouldn't I wouldn't put this down in your home kitchen, <laughs> but uh, it, it's fine for a nice, clean look in your pop-up. We bought these reflective blankets uh, to cover the bunk ends and reflect the sun. It keeps it cooler in here during the summer because it reflects the light off the bunk ends. These were probably $10 and it was a great uh, investment. So we're gonna give these to whoever buys this camper. I put it all the way in at the end and then I can always extend it out. Like I said, don't ever sit on these without your supports underneath. I'm gonna hook it here. I'm gonna push the bed out. tight as I'm going to make it. We actually covered these with stretchy, I guess they're called dining room chair covers. You can find them on Amazon and I think it was $25 for a pack of four and you just stretch them over. We decided to do that rather than re recovering these with, you know, indoor outdoor fabric or something nice. Um, I just didn't want to put a lot of money in it. We knew that we were going to be sizing up into a larger travel trailer later. So I didn't want to make any permanent changes. I didn't know, you know, if the person after us was going to want a different fabric to cover them. It just seemed like a lot of work, a lot of expense. So I left them as is. They're actually not bad if you consider that this is a 2007, I believe. Um, it could be uglier. I've seen much uglier campers. Um, so I just left them as is. I also didn't paint the cabinets because it was just seemed like a lot of work and actually the natural wood started to grow on me. I did, however, put some wallpaper here to cover the wood grain just to kind of lighten it up in here. I, um, I think this was $40 for a roll from Lowe's and, uh, it, you know, it, it looks textured. It's not, but it, um, I don't know. I thought it was pretty. And when the beds are made, you can see it a lot more. You can actually see it quite a bit over here. So just imagine this pretty dark. I can insert a photo of what it looked like before, but here you can kind of see better what it looks like to have the white countertops. Uh, these are actually the drain system for the sink. You have to drain pop-up campers out. There is no holding tank in this. There's no gray water or black water storage. This does not have a toilet. And um, so the water comes out and it just shoots right out onto the ground. So we connect this pipe to the outlet and then the hose connects. But interestingly, we found it wouldn't drain without an air vent. So this actually drains up next to the camper to let the air flow out and then the hose drains into whatever you want to drain it into. We use some like very large gasoline cans. This is sharp chalk. Uh, we use some gas cans to drain into. That's not the best solution, but for us, we weren't looking to spend a hundred dollars on a gray tank like that rolls and that you can take somewhere to dump. So that was just what we used temporarily, but you really have to have this unless you're just going to dump your gray water onto the ground, which we were staying at state parks and they do not allow that. And it's pretty gross actually, cause you're, you know, washing your, uh, you know, your food covered dishes in the sink 
and then the gray water is going down so there's food on the ground it's gross don't do that just just find something to dump into now i can go ahead and show you there's storage under all these beds not the middle one but we had some just collapsible bins under here for clothes and that worked really well there's another storage under here which is much smaller it's got the cover for the awning in there and the power cord down here i don't know what that's for one of the main downsides for me was that it was really difficult for me to pack the camper without being able to pop it up i couldn't really open these well in our garage so a lot of what we packed was just here on the floor and not inside the the storage compartments so we left things that we didn't really need to take into the house you know, nothing that needed to be washed things that always were in the camper that's what we tended to keep in there the dustpan and broom we kept in there some extra cleaning stuff the reflective blankets we kept in there because you know we didn't need them at the house so uh, just you know think of where you're going to keep things where what you're going to need to access because you don't want to have to pop it up to access something that you need um to get out of the camper my last tip is to make sure that you fasten these underneath ours are velcro but others i think they have tie straps or something just depends on what kind of camper you've got make sure these are velcroed so that no one rolls out of bed i've heard of children and puppies falling out through the cracks and this is also to prevent bugs from getting in so just make sure you go around and fasten all the way around the camper our last step for setup would be to cover these i'm not going to deal with doing that right now but um otherwise looks pretty good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.